Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. We have y double prime equals tangent y times secant squared y. And we're going to be solving for y values. Now, this is an interesting differential equation because we have the second derivative instead of the first derivative. Now think about it. If we had y prime equals tangent y times secant squared y or any other function of y on the right hand side, then this would be fairly easy, right? You could turn it to a separable differential equation by writing this as dy over dx and then putting the y's on the same side and then there's only dx on one side, by the way, which would be very easy to integrate, don't you think? But we have the second derivative that really makes things much more complicated. Anyways, so let's see how we can handle these kinds of problems. One thing that's really good about this problem is that tangent and secant squared are together. If they weren't, that would be a really more complicated situation. Anyways, let's start by using substitution. We're going to go ahead and call this u, and you could basically call it anything you want, but I just wanted to call it u. So u is, I mean, u equals tangent y, and from here we're going to evaluate u prime. The derivative of u is going to be secant squared y, the derivative of tangent, multiplied by y prime. Because y is a function of x and we're differentiating with respect to x, we need to multiply by y prime as part of the chain rule. And you're like, what? We got another prime. Okay, it's good to get y prime though, even though we don't have it in the equation, do we? We don't have y prime, we have secant squared and we have tangent. Since we don't have y prime, why not bring it in? Multiply both sides by y prime. So we have y double prime equals tangent y times secant squared y. And now we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by... Let's go ahead and move this a little bit this way. We're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by y prime. So times y prime here and times y prime here. Now, the left-hand side might look like just the product of two derivatives, but it's actually somewhat special. But we're probably going to see it better if you multiply both sides by 2. In other words, I'm multiplying both sides by 2y prime, but I did it in two steps. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to write this as 2y prime multiplied by y double prime, and the right-hand side as tangent y, or just 2 tangent y, times secant squared y prime. Now, what does this mean? Now, think about the derivative of a function, which is going to be, in this case, x squared. What's the derivative of x squared? It's 2x, right? Of course, we're differentiating with respect to x all the time, unless otherwise stated. Okay, so x, this is easy. What about y squared? If you differentiate y squared, you're going to get 2y, just like 2x, but you also have to multiply by y prime. Again, this comes from chain rule because we don't know what y is in terms of x. y is just a function of x. Uh-huh. This is the pattern we have. Look at that. Do you see what I see? See is my constant for the integration. So notice that on the left-hand side, we have the same pattern, except y was replaced with y prime and y prime was replaced with y double prime. And the same thing, something similar happens on the right hand side. By the way, I just kind of ignored the y prime here and just put it as part of the secant squared. I apologize. It should be like this. So we get the same pattern. We kind of have a function, two times the function, times its derivative, of course, ha derivative of the half, and then two times a function times its derivative. You know what that means? The left hand side here, if you look at this very carefully and consider these two things, then you're going to realize, I'm hoping that you're going to realize that this is the derivative of y prime squared. So on the left hand side, we have the derivative of y prime squared. And on the right hand side, we have the derivative of, by the way, I could do this. I probably forgot to do that. Let me do it first and then I'll write the derivatives. This one actually can be turned into, this is u and this is du, right? Or u prime, not du, what am I talking about? 
I got stuck with integrals. So that's basically kind of like this. 2y prime times y double prime equals 2u times u prime. If it's, if it's your birthday, by the way, happy birthday to you. Uh, great. So we celebrate your birthday too. Now, again, this is going to be the derivative of y squared, right? The derivative of y squared. Not y squared. Oops, sorry. It's the derivative of y prime squared. Okay, here we go. <laughs> if you differentiate y prime squared, you're going to get 2y prime times the derivative of y prime, which is y double prime. That's where it comes from. Make sense? Okay. I'm confusing myself here. And on the right-hand side, you should have the derivative of u squared. That's easier because we only have u and u prime. Great. Now, we have a function, the derivative of a function on one side and derivative of another function on the right-hand side. What does that mean? If you integrate both sides, you're going to get f equals g, of course, up to a constant. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to integrate both sides. This is going to give us y prime squared equals u squared plus a constant. Awesome. This is a huge improvement, don't you think? Now, we're going to go ahead and take square roots, but there are two square roots. I'm going to ignore the negative one, but trust me, it's very similar to the uh, plus one. So you can just go ahead and do it as an exercise, but I'm just going to go with the positive. So y prime from here can be written as the square root of u squared plus c. Of course, we can't necessarily say that u squared, prime, u squared plus c is always positive because it depends on the values of c. If c was always positive, then we would know that, yes, u squared plus c is always positive. Make sense? Now let's back substitute what is u. u is tangent y, so this is going to be the square root of tangent squared y plus c. Nice. After all these transformations and substitutions and all that math and magic, we got the first derivative, a really easy separable differential equation. Great. Let's go ahead and write this as dy over dx and then set it equal to this one more time. And now we're going to put the y on the left hand side. That's going to give us dy over the square root of tangent squared y plus c. Remember c is a constant equals dx. And now we can integrate both sides and ta-da. <laughs> you think that's going to be easy? Okay, you'll see in a little bit. But for simplicity's sake, such a nice word, right? We're going to suppose that c equals 0. Why? Because it simplifies our life. And again, we're going to make some assumptions. The square root of tangent squared can be plus minus, but I'm just going to take the tangent y because that's easier. And this is sine over cosine, or I can write it as cosine over sine. And guess what? This is actually ln because if you call this something, this will be so d something. Make sense? The derivative of sine is cosine. So this is basically ln of, again, I'm going to ignore the absolute value symbol and I'm not putting the constant because I'll put it on the right hand side. By the way, this constant is different from the integration constant. But that we got from the left hand side and on the right hand side we have the integral of dx which should give us the following ln of sine y equals x plus let's call that c1 and now we're gonna uh, e to the power of both sides that's gonna give us sine y equals e to the power x plus c1 which is a e to the x times e to the c1, but e to the c1 is a constant. We can call that k. And now this is going to give us what? Sine y equals k times e to the x. And if we arc sine both sides, we should get y equals arc sine, or some people write it as sine inverse. I know some people don't like it because it looks like reciprocal, but that's also pretty standard, especially in the United States. But anyways, this is more common, arc sine k e x. K k e to the x. Great. So we got a y value, but it's only for the simplest case, c equals 0. What happens if c does not equal 0? Of course, you also have to consider that case. If c does not equal 0, then we kind of integrate this beast. And how do you integrate it? I'll show you some results, which are going to be pretty interesting, by the way. But if you integrate this, this is what I'm thinking. You could go ahead and set tangent squared y plus c equal to u, or maybe not, don't use u, Let's use t, because you already used u. And then if you set it equal to t, then from here, tangent squared y is going to be t minus c, or tangent y can be written as the square root of t minus c. And then we can kind of write y as arc tangent square root of t minus c. And then you could find the dy from here, which is going to be like, you know, 1 over 1 plus something squared, so on and so forth. Hopefully you can plug it in. 
and find the answer that way because you're going to have square root of t at the bottom which is fairly simple and hopefully everything else will work out i haven't tried it but this is for you to work out let's go ahead and take a look at some results from wolfram alpha first of all if you integrate this guy oh it doesn't look that bad does it uh, you can go ahead and get something like this hopefully you can work this out let me know if there's an easier way to get there tangent hyperbolic inverse are you serious anyways that's the integral thanks to wolfram alpha and if you look at the solution in general this is what it looks like and c sub 1 obviously would be the coefficient that i call c i guess right anyways this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye